Hello, my little monster munch. How are you? Look, you're live from a decking. Look, you're the first people to see the... Well, not the first, but look, see all the lighting. How cool is that? Uh, how are you? I've just realised I've forgotten something. I'm just going to pick it up. How are you? And you, and you, and you. I found it. So, so much to say today. So you're thinking, ah, why is he wearing his tux? Well, if you've watched the news today, you'll know that uh, that uh, Mr. Sean Canary has sadly passed away, the original Bond, and um, some say the best Bond. That's always been debatable. I liked him as a Bond. I like Roger Moore as a Bond. I like. Uh, Timothy Dalton was a Bond actually uh, and I like the new Bonds as well So, but it's subjective so yes, uh, born in 1930 and his, his full name is uh, Thomas Sean Canary uh, and somebody's having a birthday and the interesting thing is that uh, he never in his life owned a Canary so there we go. So, I would just say I've made a cocktail. Ladies and gentlemen, I give you Mr. Sean Canary. Mm. It's one of his cocktails. So what I've done, I've had to go through the, uh, through the cupboard. So I've got some orange squash, I've got some beetroot on a stick, and some little bits of licorice I had. That's the only... That's the only uh, bits I could put in a cocktail. I didn't have any umbrellas anyway, or well, certainly not ones that would fit in the glass. Glass. Uh, uh, mm. Oh, I do like my beetroot. Anyway, does give me the opportunity to do my superb. Everybody who hears it tells me it's superb. Sean Canary impression. So here it is. Show. You expect me to talk. No, Mr. Bond, I expect you to die. You're more than welcome. It's a cracker, isn't it? I uh, can't believe I've never gone further with that guy. Um, apologies that last night's vlog didn't upload properly. I only found out today, and I've not long got back, if I'm honest. So I've, I've only just um, sort of kick-started it. Sometimes when I do it overnight, it does do funny things. So apologies, it's on its way. It's probably done as I speak, actually. Um, so yes, apologies on that. What else? I've been out and about today. I was with the Moo and the Ellie and Jordan Shire, um, and uh, we had uh, we went for a posh lunch today. That's why I've got my tux on. It's not because I'm James Bond, because we went to a harvester, really posh. So um, I think uh, tomorrow we're probably going to a Primark. I don't know, but uh, um, so <coughs> I absolutely know that none of you are interested in any of this. All you want to know is about Boris Johnson's um, press conference. Okay, so here's here's the thing. I've only just seen it as well, like you guys, so I'm still disseminating it. I do sit on, I don't sit on, I'm on a few WhatsApp groups with coaches as well. So very often we'll, we'll also chat about how we interpret what has been said. I haven't had a chance to do that properly yet either. But my, my interpretation of it at the moment is that because you're only allowed to exercise with one person outside, uh, I believe and leisure facilities will be shut. I think there will be a cessation in grassroots sport, which means that I think there will be no football for a month. Now, there is a caveat to that, that what was announced by Boris Johnson tonight has to go and be debated in Parliament, which I believe is Monday, and it's voted on in Parliament on Wednesday. Once that's voted on, assuming that it's all approved, which I think it probably will be, um, then the FA, we, we always take our guidance from the FA, and the FA will issue new guidance. My suspicion is 
that there will be no grassroots football for a month. So, um, kind of, I'm, I'm preempting um, what's going to happen. I don't know; things change rapidly, but that is my understanding of it. That's how I've read it, um, and so I would say almost certainly that there will be no, no football for a month. However, don't get too disheartened. This happened before for months. This time it's only a month. Last time it took longer to get back to football because we had to put a lot of safeguards in place. Those safeguards are in place now. So there really isn't an issue. We can go back as soon as we want when we're allowed to, if needs, if it's deemed safe by us to do so. So, so we've got all of our PPE. We've got all of our risk assessments. We've got our venue, which we went to last night, of course, the new venue. We won't have an issue going back to football as soon as is safe to do so or as soon as we're allowed to do uh, allowed to so i would say don't get disheartened it's four weeks it will go like a flash um and uh yeah should all be good so um as i say this is all up in the air in the moment because things have got to be agreed but i'm kind of just saying to you that i don't think there's going to be grassroots football for a month okay uh, what else? So I've got videos from last night, but I'm going to put them up tomorrow night because I know I realise I've witted tonight. Um, I'll do them tomorrow. Uh, once again, well done to all of those last night. It was wet, but it was good fun. and it was a, It's a lovely venue, so pleased with that. Um, this morning we did the juniors at Longfleet and something happened that very, very rarely happens when you're coaching. We got 20 minutes into the session and abandoned it. It was this morning. The rain was so heavy that A, it was stinging everybody's eyes. B, uh, my hair product was running down into my eyes and stinging anyway. Um, it would have been, it was miserable for the children, although they were great to be fair. It's miserable for the parents. We had a great turnout again, despite the rain, but ultimately um, we want the little ones to enjoy it. and and um, it, it was horrendous. I mean, the rain, if you were out in it this morning, you'll know just how bad it was. So yeah, that was my day, which was a shame, but we did get the session on and we did do 20 minutes. And we're really glad we did because if there is now a cessation in football for a month, then um, at least they've got some football this morning and um, they will remember it, <laughs> that's for sure, because it was an absolute hoolie. But bless their cotton socks they were brilliant none of them complained or anything even though we all look like drowned rats and i've spent pretty much half of the last 24 hours drying out and i've just got kit up everywhere that's drying out before i even wash it i see so but um that's the winter and that's why we love the british weather um i think that's about it so i can't be the bearer of good news but equally, I would say to you, keep your chins up, guys, because we will be back as soon as you know it. Um, government restrictions allowing and um, everything else, because as I say, we have everything in place to be able to do that. So don't be disheartened. Uh, what else? Happy Halloween. Halloween night. Uh, I shall probably go trick-or-treating in a bit. Uh, I'm just kidding. I won't. Um, I um, I haven't. I've said. I think when I drove home uh, a short while ago, I did see a few children out and about. But um, obviously, it is a lot quieter this year, as you would expect. That's it. All that remains are for your superb jokes du jour. And I know you're not in the slightest bit interested in them because you're really miffed about football. So am I. We all are, as coaches who've worked tirelessly to get football back on. Believe you, me, um, we are as disappointed, if not more so, than you guys. But we have to accept reality sometimes. Joke de jours. Where do ghosts go for their holidays? You see, these are Halloween themed. They go to the Dead Sea. <laughs> the Dead Sea, do you see what I did there, the Dead Sea? Ah, where do skeletons, uh, no, what sort of transport do skeletons use? Well, they would either use a skellycopter, of course, or a scary plane. <laughs> you see what I did after? 
Anywho, um, any questions about football, give me a call or a message. But for now, be safe. Splendid, Miss Funny Funny. Yes. There you go.